Hello everyone, this is Shamsi and welcome back for part 5 of our video guide series on getting started in Dual Universe. Today we're going to be going over a build and a setup guide for the Snowball Factory, which is the launching point from which we're able to develop our own personal industries to be able to produce any item that we would like in the game. So, let's get straight to it. Uh, last night in the five and a half hour stream, we got to this point here where we are more or less set up and then uh, you would simply follow the same process that we were uh, engaging in last night to continue on uh, buying the next pieces that uh, we needed uh, the most expensive of which was this the large assembly line uh, so I've cheated a little bit and fast forwarded for the sake of getting on and doing other content that I want to put out so I brought uh, two medium containers, the large assembly, three electronics, a 3D printer, and a chemical factory, which is what you pretty much need for the setting up of automation. <clears throat> I also turned the iron that we had into some honeycomb uh, with which we can build a floor to help us place things easier without the need to um, float things out in the sky, uh, which t takes a bit of extra time uh, in setup where did I leave the there they are so let's take these into inventory and place them just so we can uh, build out of them for the moment uh, just plonk them anywhere uh, there we go I only need one out for now declare it as our linked container put this one inside and then let's uh, take everything down. <clears throat> uh, we need to empty all of our containers before we reset up our industry. We're going to go through how that's going to be set up. And wrap this guide up uh, in that way. This should be roughly a 25-30 minute video in which I finish off the factory and then <clears throat> go through point by point what it is that we did yesterday very quickly and then have a, a half an hour version of the guide and the five and a half hour version as well. So all of these are empty, meaning I can pick them all up now. To pick things up, you use your number one element placement tool, and you hold the Alt key to place. Oh, I was picking up to my nano pack. I do not want to do that. Press Control I to switch to your linked container. We'll leave the res pad up there for now. Right, let's expand our honeycomb structure. Uh, let's expand it this way. Just keep going until we run out of honeycomb. Uh, that's a good amount of space. Uh, let's make it neater. And there we go. Let's delete the rest here, just a tiny amount. And we have some floor space to work with. So we'll go back to our linked container and start placing our industry. So first, we're going to start with the ore in. I will float this one because it is so close to the edge. 
So this is going to be our declared container where we mine or into. Its uh, space is, you know, decent. Thousand quartz only takes up one percent of its volume, so we can really pack some raw ore into here. And uh, this is going to connect to our four uh, refiners here. One. Two, three. So I'm holding down the T key to lock the item on its plane. Otherwise, it would be going all over the place, as you can see. But if I hold down the T, I can line up uh, the industry units perfectly with one another. And then I press page up to lock it into its vertical plane. While I still have T pressed, I scroll my mouse wheel up and I can scroll it up to the height that I want it. And the last one. There we go. Now these are going to output into two separate small containers just so we don't clog them up. Although I suppose I could also use my medium container for this. Now I'll, I'll save it for something else. So there's one. There's two. So let's get the links going. The bottom ones are going to output into here, and the top ones are going to output into here. Now, both of these are going to be inputs for our smelters. Uh, Alpha GG, you can indeed pick my brains. Fire away. No problem at all. In case you're wondering, uh, last night we spent about three and a half hours uh, getting from having absolutely nothing, freshly loading into the game, to having uh, about 90% of what I would call the snowball point, from which you can pretty much automate the production of... Um, is there any way to limit the output to two sickles each? What do you mean by a sickle? Um, so an output from a factory can only go to one container. It can have 10 inputs coming in, but only one output going out. Sickles. I'm sorry, I'm afraid I, I don't know what a sickle is. I don't spell well. Um, you mean these, the containers? Uh, so I want two runs, right, two uh, blueprints. So. I'm afraid not. So let me just explain why I have four refiners here. Everything I want to build for now only takes tier one ore. So I don't need to have anything other than tier one ore being refined for now. I put all of my ore into this container here and I'm gonna rename it ore in. And I can only have one recipe per um, crafting bench. So here, I'm going to do pure iron, and I'm going to set it to maintain 2,000 pure iron ingots. And now, when I get hematite in here, this will make 2,000 ingots. And when 2,000 ingots are in its outbox here, it'll stop producing it. So this large container can hold ore. I can put 10,000 hematite in here, and it won't matter, this container will only ever have 2,000 ingots in it, which means it won't get clogged up easily. Remember, our biggest struggle at the start of the game is inventory space. And if I'm automating this, I want to leave it running for 10 hours. I don't want it to become full of um, uh, this stuff, pure hydrogen and pure oxygen. Uh, so I'm limiting two uh, crafting benches to an output box because it's only small and those will only run two recipes so let's do silicon here uh, apply maintain 2000 so now these two bottom ones are set up I put raw ore into this container this one maintains 2000 iron this one maintains 2000 silicon into this container 
and uh, let's do the other two. They're all connected. They're all connected. So let's connect them to the or intake box. So I've got iron and silicon. There is left to go carbon. Maintain 2000. And aluminium. Maintain 2000. So if you want two things to be run at the same time, you need two different crafting benches. Uh, after we're done setting this up, before we start our ship build, I'll take you through uh, my main factory setup, which is enormous uh, compared to, to this. And I'll show you how I say I use eight metal workers, 16 electronics industries. Um, I have uh, 12 uh, of these refiners and I'll show you how I have one recipe uh, per crafting bench and how together through the use of transfer units, uh, through the use of container hubs. So for instance, my ore intake in my main base is four large containers linked together using a container hub. I'll uh, show you all of that. So now I'm going to double check the containers here. I see that the in tray is ore in and the out is small container 39. I'm not going to bother renaming the small containers for now. In, out. Containers in, correct, out, correct, 40. This should be container 39 as well. Yep, ore in, perfect. So these are now all set up. The next thing in our line is to take the pure ingots that they create and turn those pure ingots into alloys. And we're going to do that with our three smelters. There are three basic alloys that we want in the game. And so we have three uh, smelters to make them with. So again, I'm going to line them up perfectly on top of one another, hold down my T key and scroll my mouse wheel up to increase its height. Uh, again, hold down the T key to use your mouse to move items within one another. And here I have um, my three smelters. Now my three smelters will need an out box as well. And that out box should be separate to any other out box for the sake of uh, having room inside the container. Now. I'm going to click on the unit and click on the box. I want to be their out box. So I shall rename this one alloys. And I want to connect both of these boxes to all three of these smelters. Now, there are three basic alloys that we need. One of them is alpha alloy, apply maintain a uh, thousand one of them is cinnamon apply maintain a thousand if you do have any other questions uh, please feel free to to uh, shout them out if I do miss them uh, please forgive me I'm still getting used to having chat over here rather than over here which is how I practiced with um, our last alloy is steel and maintain 1000. So we now have the, these containers 39 and 40 going into alloys. This is making steel. We have containers 39 and 40 going in, alloys coming out, and this is making silicon. There we go, 1,000. And we have alloys out, 39 and 40 in. Production is alpha. Those are the alloys that we need. So now we put raw ore into here, and we get alloys out into here. Now we need to use those alloys to produce what we need. And for that, we're going to be putting four electronics industries. And ideally, we want more metal workers, but um, I uh, just didn't bring any more and these are the four that we bought on stream last night uh, yeah that'll do one two three and four 
So, um, we need another storage box uh, to be the output of these um, metalworks. Although, maybe we should put a medium. No, let's keep um, maintaining our medium container for uh, our production output. So, this is going to be metalwork out. Um, there we go. And this is actually going to be alloys and plastic. So let's rename that alloys and plastic. Right. So now let's sort the links out for these containers. They all go out into metal work out. And ah, slight complicating factor. We don't want all of them to go out into metal work out. We're going to connect, cut the connection of this one by alt and clicking. We're going to put a spare container on top. And we're going to have this one unit here produce basic um, pipes. And we're going to set it to maintain 100 pipes. And so now, given that pipes are a recipe required by our other metal workers, we're going to connect the pipes to the other three metal workers. So three metal workers output into this container, one metal worker output into that container. So now we can set this one to make uh, maintain uh, 250 hydraulics because that's how we need for how much we need for a large container and we can set this one to maintain um, 250 hydraulics and we can set this one to maintain 250 basic screws Uh, so ideally, we would want two more metal workers with which we make our reinforced frames. But given that we're still focusing on building industry, uh, the largest size frame we need. So if I um, look up, say, a refiner M, we need medium reinforced frame. And a medium reinforced frame is the largest size of frame that we can craft in our own nano pack. So even though we want two more metal workers, we don't need them right now. So that's the output set up, and we want alloys going into each one of these. That's what they're going to use to craft with. So that's uh, basically two thirds of our metal workers done for the automation, but um, uh, that's fine for now. And then there's also electronics. Let's get those down. Now, they're going to output into their own storage box here. And I'm going to call this one Relay because this is what I'm going to be using to put components into that other things need to craft with. So this top one is going to go into here. And this is going to be making our basic connectors. Other electronics industries need um, uh, basic connectors to craft with. So set it to maintain 300. And now I'm going to connect the relay to the other ones. I don't need to connect them to the other ones. For instance, if, if this one is making our um, uh, basic component, all it needs is, is alpha. But there's no reason not to either for now. So let's just do that. And then this is going to make our power system maintain 300. And this is going to make, uh, what else did I need? Basic power system, basic connector, basic electronics. So 
So this needs uh, plastic as well as a basic component. So who's making a basic components? Uh, let's cut your link to your output box. This does not have an output box, does it? So I can just connect it. Let me just pick this up. Uh, it's oh, it's running, so I can just uh, cancel that so I can pick it up. When you pick something up and then press backspace, it gets plunked back down. And now all of its connections are reset. So it's going to be outputting into this box. Um, no, it's not. Uh, let's do that again. It's going to be, this is the box we make our basic components with, so it's going to be outputting into Relay. And uh, basic components just need Alifé. Uh, so all it needs as an incoming connection is uh, alloys. So we have basic connectors and basic components being put into Relay. And now the Relay can, uh, it's already connected. Uh, our, the relays, if we look here on the container, the relay is connected into these two um, productions. One of them is set to maintain power system, and the other can be set to maintain basic electronics. 300 of them. So, basic connector, basic components into the relay basic electronics and basic power systems into the output box. Now all of these are going to need a connection to our alloy box as well. So now when you have a look here at basic components containers, it has an input of alloys and plastic and it has an output to relay. Speaking of plastic, let's get that set up as well. We have our chemical industry. I'll put it here in the corner. That's going to be outputting into alloys and plastic and inputting from ingots. And that's also going to consume some of the gas that we create, which helps reduce congestion into these boxes. So we need polycarbonate plastic, apply, maintain 300. It's going to consume our carbon and our hydrogen to make that. So there we go for all of those. Now, uh, the last thing we need uh, before we get on to our assemblers is a 3D printer uh, connecting to uh, this box here, electronics. No, connecting to the relay actually. So we can have input. And this is going to be set to maintain basic fixations at 100. And it needs a connection from the alloys and plastic uh, box. There we go. So, stack all of that. Let's get the ore out of there. So as you can see, some quartz were consumed uh, because the machine set to produce quartz found basic quartz in its inventory and started crafting and then let's it doesn't matter what we put where for now they are in very small quantities and they will be consumed soon enough put our ingots into there and put our alloys into here you see some alpha was already consumed by some of our electronics industry units there and then in our relay box we're going to put our basic connectors and our screws are also going into here 
so our basic components, they live here now. And plastic lives here. And I'm not going to keep the gas. The gas I can just make it will. Um, this is what you would uh, you would basically stop this um, making polycarbonate practice uh, pl uh, plastic and put it into uh, fuel production mode or easier yet just type in nitron fuel from your nanocrafter and craft it here in your inventory okay so now we're gonna start placing down our uh, assemblers in reverse order gonna place it out to the side here or in let me turn it and place it over here. Right up against the corner. And then I'm going to move this output container right here, I guess. And uh, an interesting thing you can do with uh, these units is plunk them on top of one another, which uh, I always like doing. So let's build it that way. Uh, turn these, there we go. Then the small. Doesn't look particularly neat, but I, I don't know, I like the way it looks. I haven't done it uh, in my main factory, but uh, that's fine. So now, we want our electronics output boxes connected to all of these, all four of them. Uh, we want our metalwork output boxes connected to all four of them. We want our relays connected to all four of them. I hope we have enough connections left on the relay. Uh, yes, we do. And there we go. We won't need any raw materials in here. Uh, so only produce goods go into there. And then each of these is going to output into this box here. And so this is going to be renamed factory output. And there we have it. So, when you want to make a, um, I see these two are already starting on the basic pipe and the basic screws. When there are enough pipes in the intake of uh, this factory, it'll start making our, hydro our, <coughs> our hydraulics. We need 125 hydraulics. And I think uh, something like 220 basic components and a frame for uh, a medium container. Again, it's efficient for us to make mediums. Yeah, 216 basic components, 125 hydraulics, basic real force frame. So overnight, our um, training queue was continuing on. So now when I go to our container link, we are at level three. That means we can go 750 extra meters out, which means now all we have to do is get our scanner out. There's two points already. Start filling this or in container. We right click declare as linked container so we can mine straight into it. We start filling raw ore into this container. Getting components out to this container and then set our large assembly here to make medium containers. Um, oh, I do apologize, I made a mistake there. For our medium containers, we do need to switch off one of the hydraulics metalworks once we have enough hydraulics to make a large frame. Large frames take, I think, 30 minutes or 18 minutes or something to make. And then when that's ready, this will start making our first medium containers. When we can make our own medium containers, we can ramp up production 
very quickly. And so this is what I meant when I said we want to reach a snowball point. This is the snowball point. Our ore, our alloy, our electronics, our metalwork processes are automated. If I get two more metalwork uh, industry buildings, so at some point today I'll be getting my 100,000 injection on this character, or I can just take more ore to the market to sell, or at this point, it's easy enough for me to make my own metalwork industry. Um, all I need is a basic power system that is completely automated. Uh, I can make this and this in my own inventory and pipes that are automated. So I could uh, get busy making two more of those. Set one to maintain large reinforced frame at one. So this process of making a container will then be completely automated. And have one spare to make um, anything I want. Uh, so, you know, mobile frame M's, you know, make one of them in a factory and one of them in inventory or, or whatever. Okay. This be the snowball point. So I hope you found this useful. This is just a basic start um, of how to get from freshly logging into the game into this point where you can make any crafting component you want in the game and with a little bit more work uh, you get to make anything you want in the game. Um, Alpha Gigi, thank you for following. I appreciate that. Right. Um, let us switch accounts. Hello again, everyone. Thanks for watching. Next up, I'm going to be making a full factory guide on my own personal factory, which is significantly larger than what's featured in this video. And from it, I'm able to build any item that I would like in the game. So if you would like a factory like it, you can follow along step by step and uh, build your own. I'm also going to be making a video on a warp cell production facility. I believe everyone needs one of those. And that's based off of a design that was on Reddit a little while ago. So if either of those sound interesting to you, do keep an eye out on the channel uh, to see when they are uh, uploaded. Or if you would like uh, to come hang out while we build those stuff um, on uh, Twitch, uh, do uh, consider giving the channel there a follow. Until the next time, thank you for watching and bye for now.